Oh, praise to the most high. So tonight's topic again is called a sinful state of mind. A sinful state of mind. Let's open up with the book of Romans. Okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Let's start there. Romans 8, verse 5. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Mm -hmm. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. You see that they that are after the flesh, they mind the things of the flesh. So when it says you're, you're after the flesh, that means what? Sin. You understand? Those that are after their sins, they mind the things of sin. The things that bring, the things that go with sin, they're gonna, that's all they're going to think about. Sin, 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 and more sin. Okay, read that again, verse 5. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Stop right but there. That... It's, hold on. It says, they that, they that are after the flesh, they do mind, meaning they think the things of the flesh. What are the things of the flesh? Watch this. Give me that in, um, give me that in wisdom, Solomon. It says, they that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. Watch this. But before you get there, I'm going to deal with it like this. Give me that in John 6, 63. Watch this. It says, they that are after the flesh, they mind the things of the flesh. Watch this. John 6, 63. The book of John, John 6. 6, verse 63. Go ahead. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The spirit. Those that are after the flesh, they think about the things of the flesh. And those that are of the spirit, the things of the spirit. He says, it is the spirit that what? It is the spirit that quickens. It is the spirit that changes us. The spirit of Christ that is in us is what's going to change us from being niggers, from being sinful minded to being spiritually minded. Come on. The flesh profited nothing. That part right there. That's the part we want. Is that the flesh profited nothing. The flesh profited nothing. What is the flesh? Sin. Sin profits us nothing. Come on. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You see that? So it says, the flesh profits you nothing. The, the flesh profits nothing. The flesh doesn't profit, but the words that Christ spoke unto us, they bring us, they, they, that's the spirit and they give us life. Watch this, Galatians 5 real quick. Galatians 5 is 19. Because he says, those that are of the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. The things of the flesh is the works of the flesh. The things of the flesh is the works of the flesh. Galatians 5, verse 19. Watch this. Come on. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? The works of the flesh is the things of the flesh. So everything we're going to read here is the things of the flesh, which is the works of the flesh. Okay, read. Which are these? Mm -hmm. Adultery. Adultery, works of the flesh, come on. Fornication. Fornication, read. Uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Lasciviousness. So all of these things that we're reading about here, these are all the works of the flesh, particularly when it comes to what? Sexual sins. That's where it says adultery, fornications, uncleanness, lasciviousness. The uncleanness part is all is still dealing with sexual sins. Okay. It says adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. They are all related. You understand? And these are the major ones that are plaguing Israel, by the way. I'm not saying the other ones are not, but I'm saying these ones right here that we just read, we just read, these are the main ones that are plaguing Israel the most. You understand? So that's why I just want to focus on these, on this wise, okay? So now go back, go back to Romans 8, read verse 5 again. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. So now the things of the flesh, particularly what we're dealing with here is what? The works of the flesh, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, you understand? So when it says, for they that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. So when you are sinful, when you are sinful minded, these are the things that you think about. You understand? These are the things that you after. Every decision you make will be to support these things, these works of the flesh. 
adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, they are all works of the flesh. Okay, come on. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. But they that are after the spirit is they that are after life. That's what we read in John 6. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh does not profit. The words that Christ spoke unto us, they are spirit and they are life. So when we are after the spirit, we are after life, eternal life. The, the, the things of the spirit is the things that bring us eternal life. That's what the scriptures is teaching us. Get that in Proverbs 7 verse 2 real quick. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. The things of the flesh, they bring death. The things of the spirit, they bring life. Proverbs 7 verse 2. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Read. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my and commandments law, and live. Read. And the law is the apple of thine eye. You see that? The Lord says, keep my commandments and you will get eternal life. That's what he's saying right there. So guess what? When we after the spirit, we after life. Because the things of the spirit, they bring eternal life. But the things of the flesh, they bring death. That's what we all need to understand. Okay. Give me the book of, um, go back to Romans now. Read verse 6. Romans 8 verse 6. Because we're dealing with a sin, sinful mindedness. You understand? Being sinful minded. Okay. Romans 8 verse 6. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 6. Go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death. You see that to be sinfully minded brings death. When you're sinful minded, guess what? You carnal minded. That means what? Your mind is after the works of the flesh, which we read in Galatians 5, verse 19. Go ahead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see that? But when we spiritually minded, Meaning what? We are, our mind is on the commandments of the Most High. We're going to get the eternal life and we're going to get eternal peace too. You understand? But when we are carnally minded, we're going to get death. Because to be carnally minded will bring death unto us all. Understand that. Get that in wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 14. When we carnally minded, this is what it means to be carnally minded. Read that some more. Wisdom of Solomon. Okay, chapter 9 verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Read. And our devices are but uncertain. You see that? It says, for the, because the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. And our devices are but uncertain. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 14. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable right and our devices are but uncertain so when he says the thoughts of mortal men the thoughts of mortal men is the works of the flesh that is the thought of the thoughts of mortal men is the works of the flesh so when he says the thoughts of mortal men are miserable guess what the thoughts of mortal men is the works of the flesh and those thoughts they are miserable what does it mean Go back to uh, Galatians 5, verse 19. I'm going to show you what that means. When it says the thoughts, why is he saying the thoughts of mortal men, they are miserable? This is the reason why. Galatians 5, verse 19. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19. Come on. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Mm -hmm. Ad adultery, fornication, Rain. and cleanness. Mm -hmm. Let's see business. Stop right there. So it says the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adult. Listen, adultery, the King Solomon says the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Adultery will bring misery to your life. It's not going to give you life and peace. It's going to bring misery to your life because it brings what? Diseases, unwanted pregnancies. You understand? Okay. Abortions. That's the misery it brings. It brings arguments, you understand? It invites Satan into your house. That's what adultery does. So it is not gonna bring you life and peace. It does not bring eternal life. It does not bring eternal peace. You understand? The next one is what? Is adultery fornication, which is same thing, sex outside of marriage. You understand? So that's gonna be, bring misery to your life. 
It's not going to bring life and peace to your life. It's going to bring diseases and heartache. That's why it says the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. You ever see, you see, see, you even see our brothers and sisters out there that are in the midst of Mujolo. Look at it on TikTok. Look the level of misery they are in, the level of demonic activity they are in. So how much more our brothers out there, what about us in the congregation? Because we are dealing with this stuff. We are going through all these things, adulteries, fornication, uncleanness and lasciviousness. They are not going to bring peace to our lives. So that's why the Lord is saying, these things, they will bring misery to our lives because they don't bring life and peace. But the laws of God, when we are, when we are spiritually minded, we're going to have life and we're going to have peace. You understand? So the Lord is giving us the keys to the kingdom and the keys to have peace of mind too. Keeping of God's commandments will give you peace of mind. Keeping of God's commandments will give you life eternal. That's what he's saying. You understand? It says uncleanness and lasciviousness. None of these things will bring you peace and life. They will bring death and damnation. That's what they will bring. They will bring chaos and confusion into your life. You understand? They will give you lack of peace of mind. That's what the Lord is saying. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14 again. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. You see that, right? And our devices are but uncertain. You see that? Our devices are but uncertain. Because plans that are not established with the Mosa, by the Mosa, they are not going to be certain. You understand? They never work out. They always end up in tears and chaos and anger and bitterness and hatred and deceit. Why? Because the Most High God is not in the midst of all that. That's why it says our devices are but uncertain. You understand? But when you keep God's commandments, there's certainty in keeping God's commandments. You understand? There's no confusion. It, the laws of God brings clarity. God's laws, they bring it clarity and what? It brings clarity and peace of mind. But sin does not bring clarity, neither does it give you peace of mind. It doesn't. It gives you instability. That's what sin does. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 15. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. You see that? Our bodies are corruptible. So it presses down the soul, our mind. You understand? It suppresses the mind. So when we are in the midst of sin, we're actually oppressing ourselves. We're oppressing the mind. You understand? Read. And the earthly tabernacle wear down the mind that uses it upon many things. Because these bodies, these are earthly tabernacles. They weigh down the mind that uses it upon many things. What are the many things? The works of the flesh. Those are the many things. Because our mind is musing on the works of the flesh. It says our earthly tabernacle is going to weigh down that mind. I mean, it's going to oppress your mind, your spirit, and your soul. That's why you're not going to have peace. You're going to have chaos, confusion. You understand? Disruption in your life because of what? Sin. Because of the mind that is musing upon many things. That's what the scriptures is saying right there. So we need to understand the importance of keeping God's commandments. When we are sinful minded, we're, gonna, we're bringing death, destruction, and chaos into our lives. When we're spiritually minded, we bring life and peace. That's what the Lord is saying. Okay? So go back to Romans chapter 8. Read verse 6 again. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Read. For to be carnally minded is death. Mm -hmm. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see that to be Spiritually minded is life and peace. It is the spirit that quicken us. The spirit of the Christ is what's changing us. You understand? So that our minds don't muse upon many things. What are the many things? The works of the flesh. Okay, go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You see that? The carnal mind is in active opposition to the most high God. Right? For it is not subject to the law of God. Right? Neither indeed can be. You see that? He says the, the, the carnal mind is not subject to the laws of God. This carnal mind is not humble to the laws of God. That's what he's saying. 
Meaning what? The sinful mind, the mind that muses upon the works of the flesh will not subject itself or humble itself to the laws of God. Neither indeed it can be. So what is the Lord telling us? The Most High is telling us that through the Apostle Paul, that when we sinful minded, guess what? We are not subject to the Most High, meaning we are, we are not his subjects. We, are, we, are, we belong to Satan. When we are sinful minded, we belong to Satan. Get that in John 8, John chapter 8. Because we sinful minded, the law says we belong to Satan. We don't belong to him. Okay, John chapter 8, verse 44. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 44. Pray. Ye of your father, the devil. You see that? So when we are carnally minded, because we are carnally minded as a people, we are carnally minded within and without, we sinful minded. Guess what? We are of our father, the devil. That's what the Lord is saying. So if we want to belong to the Lord, we need to be spiritually minded. So if for us to be spiritually minded, we must mind the things of the spirit, meaning we must think, do, eat, sleep, the things of the spirit. You understand? The things of the spirit, get Galatians 5 now, verse 22 real quick. This is what it means to be spiritually minded. Okay, come on. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. Read. But the fruit of the spirit is love. You see that? But the fruit of the spirit is love. So this is what it means to be spiritually minded. When we're spiritually minded, guess what? We, that, that, that's what's going to, in our minds, going to be love. What is love? Keeping of the laws of God. That's love. When we, you keep God's commandments, that means you're minding the things of the spirit. Read on. Joy. When we mind, the, when we spiritually minded, we're going to have the spirit of joy. It's not going to be fake. You understand? We're not going to be faking the funk with our laughter because some people will, you'll see that they're laughing, they're acting like everything is all good, but they are miserable. You know why? Because the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. You understand? So, but when we're spiritually minded, guess what happens to us? We get the spirit of joy in our hearts. There is why you see brothers and sisters always moody. You understand? always with a, with a screw face and whatnot is because they are carnally minded, not spiritually minded. That's why they don't have the spirit of joy. Go ahead. Peace. That's when you're spiritually minded, you're going to have peace. The laws of God will bring you peace in your mind. Come on. Long suffering. You're going to have the spirit to enjoy, to suffer long. Come on. Gentleness. You're going to have that gentleness spirit. Read. Goodness. Keeping of the commandments, read. Faith. You're going to have faith in the most high. You're not going to be doubtful. You're not going to be double-minded. You understand? You're not going to be unsure of yourself. Because why? You're keeping God's commandment. You're spiritually minded. Read on. Meekness. Meekness. Meaning to submit to the laws of God. Because that's what meekness is. Being submissive to God's commandments. So these are, when we spiritually minded, we're going to have the spirit of meekness. Come on. Temperance. We're going to have wisdom. Come on. Against such, there is no law. There is no law against these. When we're spiritually minded, we're going to have all these attributes. The reason why you see many of us, we jacked up, messed up. You understand? We weaken the spirit. We cannot maintain keeping of God's commandments. is because we carnally minded. We're not spiritually minded. That's the reason why. It's easy for us. We, there's always something wrong. There's always something wrong with you. There's always something going on. It doesn't matter whether it's in the morning when you wake up, whether it's during the day, whether you go to sleep. There's just something wrong with you. Because why? you carnally minded. You're not spiritually minded. Whenever we're spiritually minded, our, we are going to have miserable lives. Your whole day will be miserable. Why? Because you carnally minded. Go back to wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 14 again. I want that verse to hit home. Okay, come on. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Mm. And our devices are but uncertain. You see that mood swings? You see brother or sister having mood swings? is because their thoughts 
They are carnally minded. So everything that comes out of their mouth is just misery. You understand? They cannot really like, whenever you talk to them, everything has to be about feel. I feel, I feel, I feel. They are carnally minded. They are not spiritually minded. It's always about feelings. You understand? So the most that God says, we must be spiritually minded. When we're spiritually minded, we're going to get the fruits of the spirit. But as long as we're carnally minded, we will never get the fruits of the spirit. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So mood swings, they will never go away unless you start to become spiritually minded, actively pursuing the laws of God, actively finding joy in God's commandments. Because if you don't, cannot find joy in God's laws, you are never going to be spiritually minded. You'll always be carnally minded. You're, you'll always be miserable. You'll pretend and all that, but you are miserable. Mood swings, acting full-blown woman. You understand? Why? Because there's no spiritual mind. It's a carnal mind. The old man is running the show with a hundred million demons that I now joined in. Okay, all praise to the most high. So, read that again. Read that, read that verse one more again for me. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter, chapter 9, verse 14. Come on. For the, thought of, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. The thoughts of mortal men, the Lord says they are miserable. So whenever you see a brother or, and or sister, they are miserable most of the time is because they are carnal mind. They are carnally minded. They are sinful minded. They, are, they, are, they have a sinful state of mind, not a spiritual state of mind. You understand? No, a biblical state of mind. They are, have a sinful state of mind. That's why they are miserable. And it says they are, they are devices about what? And our devices are but uncertain. It says, but our plans, the things we want to do, they are uncertain. That's why they never work out. That's why they never succeed. Why? Because we carnally mind it. You understand? Go back to Romans chapter 8 now. Romans 8. Verse 6. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 6. Come on. For to be carnally minded is death. Mm -hmm. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now give me that in Isaiah 26, verse 3. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You want life. You want eternal life. You also want to have some life in you. You understand? We must be spiritually minded. We're not going to get it some other way. There's no, there's no way around it, brothers. You have to go to, you have to go it, you have to go by the laws of God. Whenever we go around God's commandments, there will never be peace. No, 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 will there be life in each and every one of us. Understand that. Okay, read that. Isaiah 26, verse 3. The book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. Read. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, mm -hmm. because he trusted in thee. You see that the Lord says, he promises, he's promising us through Isaiah says, he will keep us in perfect peace. You understand? Because our mind is stayed on the Lord, because we're spiritually minded. The Lord is giving us the blueprint. He says, you want peace? Listen, your mind must be stayed on me. Our minds must be stayed on the Lord if we want perfect peace to flourish. Perfect peace will not flourish if we carnally mind it. Because when we carnally mind it, we self-destructive, number one. Not only that, but we hate ourselves. You understand? But we have to be spiritually minded instead of carnally minded, which will bring death and chaos and confusion in our lives. Okay? Because we trust in the Lord. That's what the Lord is looking for. He says, I want, you want peace of mind? You want to have life? You want to have joy? You want to have long suffering? You want to, all of these traits, these are the fruits of the spirit. When we spiritually minded, the Lord says, I'm going to give you those things. Those are the fruits I'm going to give you. But those fruits will only get them when we keep God's commandments because the laws of God is how those plants are planted in our spirit. Keeping of God's commandments is sowing season. You understand? So when we get the fruits of the spirit is harvest season. 
Understand that. And that takes time. It takes application. It takes consistency. You understand? It takes decisiveness also. You're making a decision and say, I'm not looking back to this. I'm going to make a decision and then I pray the Lord give me strength to continue on this thing. That's what we're looking for. That's what the Lord is looking for. You understand that, brothers? Go ahead. Trust ye in the Lord forever. You see that? Trust ye in the Lord forever. We must trust in the Lord forever. The problem is we don't trust in the Lord. We trust in our feelings. We trust in the works of the flesh instead of what? The most High God. Because the minute you trust yourself, that means you trust your carnal mind. You trust all the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh comes with feelings. The works of the flesh deny God's commandments. So that's what we need to understand. So don't trust yourself. Trust in the Lord. Read again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 4. Trust ye in the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. You see that thing? For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So the Lord says, I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to give you perfect peace. That perfect peace will, for, will flourish when I give you the fruits of the spirit. But the fruits of the spirit will only come out when we obey and humble down to what the Bible says. Because that's how the laws of God, that's how the fruits, the fruit tree is going to be planted through God's commandments. The fruits of the spirit, that tree that brings the fruit of the spirit will not come out if we are not obeying and hearkening and humbling down to the laws of God. The minute we put the Lord of God aside, the fruits of the spirit will never come out. Never. You understand? They will never show up. And that's what the Lord is trying to show us. That's what he's trying to open our eyes to. You understand? So now, get that in um, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Read verse 11. Wait, wait. Before we get there. Before we get there. So part of the reason why you see that um, we carnally minded, because to be carnally minded, it means we have not fled our youthful lusts. We're still entertaining our youthful lusts. We're still fulfilling our youthful lusts. Get that in 2 Timothy 2 verse 22. Let's read that real quick. Watch this. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22. The second book of Timothy, chapter 2. Verse 22. Verse 22. Flee also youthful lust. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, flee also youthful lust. Where's the Apostle Paul getting this from? Get that in Sarah 18 verse 30. He says, flee also. He didn't say walk away from them. He says, run. Flee. Run. Flee also youthful lusts. And that's something that we have not actually realized. That the Lord didn't say, we must walk away from our youthful lust. We must run away from our youthful lust. That's what he's saying. Read that in Sarah 18 verse 30. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 18 verse 30. Read. Go not after thy lust. You see that? Is the apostle Paul is quoting Sarah. It says what? Read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 18 verse 30. Mm -hmm. Go not after thy lust. You see that? When he says go not after their lust, it means flee also youthful lusts. Flee also youthful lusts. What are those youthful lusts? The lusts of the flesh. What are those lusts of the what is the, the works of the lust of the flesh? The works of the flesh. You understand? Which bring misery and pain and uncertainty. You, 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 are, you have lack of confidence. There's no surety in that walk. There's no surety in your speech nor in your thought process. You understand? Because of what those youthful lusts. Read again, verse 30. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 18, verse 30. Come on. Go not after thy lust, mm -hmm. but refrain thyself from thine appetites. You see that? But refrain, but abstain yourself from your appetites. Everybody has different appetites, but the appetites that we're going over was what? Was adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lasciviousness. Those are appetites, brothers. Those are appetites. The Lord says we must flee from those things. We must flee from those youthful lusts. Because in your youth, you're not supposed to be having those appetites. The appetites with the Lord commanding us to must have in our youth is this. 
Get that in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and 1. The problem is the reason why we cannot flee from youthful lusts is because in our youth, we're focusing on the wrong things. You understand? And this is what the Lord wants us to focus on in our youth. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. Come on. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Stop right there. What did he say? Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. You see that? He didn't say remember your, your lusts. He didn't say entertain nor indulge in your life. He says remember therefore now thy creator in the day of your youth. In our youth, the Lord says you must remember your creator. Don't be entertaining or fulfilling your youthful lusts in your youth. In your youth, you remember your creator. You understand? Read again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Go ahead. While the evil days come not. When the, while nor the, the evil youth. days. While the evil days come not. Before the evil days come not. It says, remember the creator in the days of your youth. Because in your youth, you're going to experience those evil days. You understand? You'll experience your evil days if your focus is not on God's commandments in your youth. Because those evil days in your youth, they will extend into adulthood. You understand? And when you are in your adulthood, it's going to be much, diff it's going to be much harder to get rid of them. That's why there's a saying that goes, it's easy to raise a child than to fix a broken man or woman. Let me say that again. It's easy to raise a child than to what? Than to fix a broken man or woman. That's why it says, remember the creator in the days of your youth. While the evil days come not. Because the evil days will come in your youth. And when they come in your youth, they will extend into your adulthood. You understand? Read again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1. Come on. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Read. While the evil days come not, mm -hmm. nor the years draw nigh. You see that? Nor the evil years draw nigh when you go into your adulthood. Come on. When, the, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. You see that thing? You're not going to have pleasure in your youth neither in your adulthood if you don't remember your creator in the days of your youth. But if you're focusing on those youthful lusts, guess what? You're going to experience the evil days in your youth. Not only that, but you'll experience the evil days in your adulthood and even into your old age. You'll experience those evil days and you're going to have no pleasure in them. Them, them days in your youth and them days, them years in your adulthood and into your old age, you're not going to have pleasure in them. That's why it says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Because when you remember your creator in the days of your youth, this is what you're doing. Get that in his Ecclesiastes. No, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 18. You know what? Give me Sarah 51. Before you get that, get Sarah 51. Read verse 13 for me. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 51, verse 13. Come on. When I was yet young, mm. or, e or ever I went, I or went ever abroad. I went abroad. So he says, when he was young, and whenever he traveled and went abroad, what did he do? I desired wisdom openly in my prayer. You see that thing? He says he desired wisdom openly in his prayer. He says, when he was yet young, in his youth, whether he traveled from here to there, abroad, he says that's the only thing he desired. He desired wisdom in his youth. He desired wisdom when he was yet young. Because that's what we're supposed to desire in our youth. Wisdom. That's how you remember our, that's how we remember our creator in the days of our youth. We, 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 how do we do that? We desire wisdom in our prayer. So when you send the prayers up, we ask the Lord for wisdom. We ask the Lord to give us the spirit to apply his commandments, the spirit to understand his law, statutes, and commandments so we can be better examples to our brethren. You understand? And build this great nation of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read that again, verse 13. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 51, verse 13. Come on. 
when I was yet young, or ever I went abroad, mm -hmm. I desired wisdom openly in my prayer. You see that he desired wisdom openly in his prayer. That means the people knew that young man is about the desiring of wisdom of the Lord. He keeps the commandments. He desires wisdom. And so openly it was known. You understand? Sirach 6 verse 18. Because in our youth, that's what the law says. In your youth, that's what you must desire. You must not have appetites of adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, and uncleanness. That's not the things we're supposed to desire openly. We're supposed to desire the laws of God. And that's a process because we've been conditioned in this captivity to fulfill or indulge in the lust of our flesh. You understand? That's why it says the flesh profited nothing, but the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Read that. It's like 6 verse 18. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6 verse 18. Go ahead. My son, gather instruction from the youth up. You see that? He says, do what? Gather instruction from the youth up. So he says, you see, in your youth, he says, you must gather instruction in your youth up. You understand? That's the command. That's the commandment. We must gather instructions from the laws of God in our youth up. Go ahead. So shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. What you see that? Because we're gonna get wisdom till our old age. When we gather instruction when we're still young, even when we grow older, guess what? We're gonna have wisdom when we grow older. We're not gonna be an old fool. That's what the Lord is saying. You understand? And that's what we supposed, that's what's supposed to be the apple of our eye. The apple of our eye now is not the scriptures. The apple of our eye now is not the most like God's face. The apple of our eye now is the, those lusts and those appetites that we cannot seem to refrain or abstain from. That's what the Lord is saying. And we all have to apply ourselves to get this right. Now read that in Sarah 25, verse 3. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 3. Read. If thou hast gathered nothing in the youth, mm -hmm. how? Canst thou find anything in thine age? You see what he's saying? If you don't gather anything in your youth, what you gonna find anything in your age? Nothing. So the Lord is saying, the, the young man, like you, let's say you're 20, you are 18, you come into this truth. You're 19, you're 20, you're 21, so on and so forth. You're coming into this truth. The Lord says, listen, gather instruction from your youth. You're 25 and up, listen. Get your wisdom, get, listen, get this Bible now, get it together now. You don't have time left. That's what he's saying. Don't waste time with it. You understand? So even like you come in, you're 20 years old, you're still old. You understand? It needs to be gathered from the youth, from when he's still young. But the thing is, we're not grow, we didn't grow up in the truth. It's only our children that are growing up in the truth. But the Lord says we must have the spirit of agency to this. Remember, there's no more captivity after this. This is it. That's why Christ had to make, come and make that ultimate sacrifice. This is the final captivity. This is it. We used to be hearing from our grandfathers and grandmothers saying, you know, these are the last days. But these are the last days indeed. Because there's no more captivity after this. Not for Israel. You understand? Read again. Verse 3. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 3. Read. If thou hast gathered nothing in the youth, how canst thou find anything in thine age? Because the wisdom of the Lord will sustain you in your old age. When you look at our forefather, Eliezer, he was an old man. But guess what? Even from his youth, even until his old age, he kept God's commandments. And that was the crown, that was the crown of glory upon his head. You understand? That's why till this day, we can read about him. Because he was a man of integrity. And that's the level we have. We must get to. You understand? Now, give me that in um, Romans chapter 2, verse 18, to understand the instructions that we must gather from our youth. The Lord is saying. Read that. Romans 2, verse 18. The book of Romans chapter 2, verse 18. Come on. And knowest this will. Mm -hmm. And approvest the things that are more excellent. Read. Being instructed out of the law. 
You see that being instructed out of thy law. So guess what? The instruction that we must gather from the youth up is the instruction out of God's commandments because that's what's going to give us wisdom. That's how we're going to be spiritually minded instead of carnally minded. If you're getting any instruction outside of God's commandments, guess what? You're not going to have peace, neither will you have life. But you're going to have death and you're going to have chaos in your life. And you're gonna have every thought that comes to your head will be nothing but misery. Why? Because of not wanting to humble down to what this Bible is saying. You understand? So basically, when we don't want to be spiritually minded, we suicidal. You understand? We are we have the spirit of hate, self-hate. Okay, we hate ourselves that much that we're willing to bring to call death upon ourselves. That's what the Lord is saying. But God's commandments will give us life, life and peace. You cannot, those things are priceless. You cannot trade them for nothing. Okay. I need you men to understand this thing. Okay. Now watch this. Go back to 2 Timothy 2 verse 22. Let's go back there. The second book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. Come on. Flee also youthful lusts. You see that? He says, flee also youthful lust, meaning abstain thyself from thine appetites. We must flee from youthful lust. The youthful lust is the works of the flesh. Understand that. The youthful lust is the works of the flesh, which brings death. Okay, go ahead. But what must we do? When we flee, when we flee youthful lust, what's the solution? Go ahead. But follow righteousness. You see that? But we must do what? Follow righteousness. But we must follow righteousness. So the Lord is not, is not, is not, is not unjust. We're saying, drop this. Okay, but what do I do in place of it? The Lord is telling you what we must do. He says, drop the youthful lusts, and in place of the youthful lust, follow righteousness, meaning gather instructions in your youth so that when you grow older, you'll find wisdom till your old age. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? The things that makes a man or a woman is the keeping of God's commandments. That's what, we, that's what it means to be men or women in the sight of the Lord. When we keep the laws of the Most High and uphold them and fight, because this is a war, brothers. I need you to understand this. This is a fight. We're at war. It's a spiritual war. We must fight to overcome. Don't sit in some corner like a wet puppy feeling sorry for yourself. You have to fight. As long as there's still breath in you, there's still hope. You better apply these laws, statutes, and commandments to your life so that the Lord can change you. Read again. The second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 22. Mm -hmm. Flee also youthful lust. Go ahead. But follow righteousness, mm. faith, mm. charity, Come peace. On. With mm. them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You see that? With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So when we follow righteousness, remember what we just read, when it says follow righteousness, these are the fruits of the spirit. You understand? These are the works of the spirit. These are the things of the spirit. When we follow righteousness, this is the fruits that the Lord says, I'm going to give you these fruits liberally and abradeth not. You understand? So we need to understand the importance of keeping God's commandments because I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being in captivity. We want to go back home. But we're not going to go back to, the, to our father's house. We're not going to come in some type of way. We must come in holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. That's how the Lord wants us to return. Holy and acceptable as a reasonable service. That's it. As a living sacrifice. That's the only thing that the Lord is looking at. He's looking for. Okay. So keep going. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. You see that, but foolish and unlearned questions, because what is he saying? Meaning foolish, what brings foolishness? The lack of keeping of God's laws. So it says, and unlearned questions. What does that mean? Because when somebody asks you a question, you can tell where they're at. You can tell whether they are studying. You can tell whether they, they love to apply the laws of God. You can tell whether they are faking the funk. You can tell whether they are just, they're just going through the motions. But if, when you study, 
the questions are good. You're gonna, you're gonna, you can tell her, this person is learned, they are studying, hence the question, the type of question they ask. But the type of question they ask, they'll tell you whether they are learned or unlearned, whether they are in it or they are not, whether they wanna humble down to this Bible or not, you can tell. Read that verse again. The, the second book of Timothy, chapter two, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Go but ahead. Fully and unlearned questions avoid. Mm -hmm. Knowing that they do gender strives. You see that they gender strive. They cause confusion. They gender strive. They cause confusion. Foolish and unlearned questions. The law says don't deal with that because their job is to create what? Strife. What is strife? Get the definition of strife. Strife. So the busy Let's read the definition of strife. It says, foolish questions, they cause strife. Let's get the definition of strife. Because strife, remember, strife is the works of the flesh. Don't forget now. Strife is the one, one of the works of the flesh. So let's get the definition of strife. Read that. The definition of strife. Mm -hmm. Angry or bitter disagreement. Over what? Over fundamental issues. You see that? Angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. That's what foolish questions, that's what they pray. The law says foolish questions, they gender strife. They bring anger and bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. That's not the works of this. That's not the fruit of the spirit. That's the works of the flesh. Read the definition again. Definition of strife, mm. angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. You see that? So these questions, the Lord is saying this type of these type of things that because that's a mind that muses upon many things, miserable minds. That's what they bring strife. Not the fruit of the spirit, but the works of the flesh. Why? Because the Lord said, when we carnally minded, when we sinful minded, guess what the fruit? Guess what the fruits are? Strife sedition, emulation, wrath, lasciviousness, uncleanness, fornication, all of that. that. All that is the works of the flesh. You understand? So read, read that again in 2 Timothy chapter 2. The second book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 23. Mm -hmm. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Go ahead. Knowing that they do gender strives. Knowing, knowing, he says, you must know that they are going to bring or gender strife. So the law says, don't give them breathe. Don't give them life to breathe. Why? Because they're going to bring, they're going to make, they're going to bring the, the works of the flesh rather than the fruits of the spirit. You understand? So that's why the Lord is teaching us we must be spiritually minded and that takes work. You understand? It takes structure. It takes consistency. It takes application. You understand? It takes the level of decisiveness from the man or woman to be able to achieve that. That's what the Lord is trying to show us. We must apply ourselves, okay? Now, um, go back to Romans chapter eight. I'm gonna close it in a second. Romans chapter eight, read verse seven one more again. The book of Romans chapter eight, verse seven. Mm -hmm. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Really? For it is not subject to the law of God. Mm -hmm. Neither indeed can be. You see that? The carnal mind is enmity with God. Get the definition of enmity. We read it during the men's conference, but I want to touch on this one more again. Enmity. Enmity. He says the carnal mind is enmity with God. Let's get there. Definition of enmity. Mm -hmm. A state of feeling of active opposition or hostility. Read that again. A state of feeling of active opposition or hostility. You see that? It says a state of feeling. So guess what? Enmity is a works of the flesh. It's a state of mind or a feeling of the flesh. State of mind or feeling of the flesh. 
none of which is what is anything has to do with the spirit. In active opposition to what or what? Or hostility. Or hostility. So that's what enmity is. So it says you is a state or feeling of active opposition or hostility. So when it says the carnal mind is enmity against God, the carnal mind, guess what? Has an active or feeling, is as a feeling or active state of what? Of active opposition against what? Against, against the Mosa in this case. Read the definition one more again so I don't push it. Definition of enmity. Mm -hmm. a, Go state, ahead. a state or feeling of active mm. opposition or hostility. So active opposition or hostility towards the most high. So when you carnal minded, you are actively in opposition to the most high. Actively, not passive, it's active, meaning it's deliberate. Deliberate opposition against the most high God. That's what he's saying right there. So read that verse again. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 7. Come on. Because the carnal mind is enmity, enmity against God, mm -hmm. for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the carnal mind is the sinful mind. The sinful mind is the the, the sinful mind is the mind that muses upon many things, which is what? The works of the flesh. That's the sinful mind. The sinful mind is a miserable mind. The sinful mind is an ugly mind. It's a mind that's ugly. You understand? If the mind is ugly, your countenance is going to be ugly. Your speech is going to be ugly. Your behavior is going to be ugly. Your mannerism will be ugly. Everything will be ugly. Why? Because it does not the fruits of the spirit, but the works of the flesh. Because the mind is musing upon all these evil things. You understand? That's what the Lord is teaching us there. So when our mind is occupied with evil things, guess what? It's going to show in our physical, in our physical lives too. It's going to show. So that's why we need the laws of God to bring those fruits of the spirit rather than the works of the flesh. You understand? So go back to John 6, 63. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. Mm-hmm. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of Christ is what's going to change us. Is what, is, is what quickens us. What changes us. Come on. The flesh profited nothing. You see, the flesh does not profit nothing. But what does it bring? It brings death and damnation. The flesh profits nothing. The carnal mind is not subject to the laws of God. Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You see that? The words that Christ spoke unto us, they are spirit and they are life. Get that into Tommy 29, 29. The words that Christ spoke unto us, what are they? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. Right? The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Right? But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Mm -hmm. That we may do all the words of this law. You see that? That we may do all the words of this law. So the words that Christ spoke unto us is the laws of God. That's what's going to bring us life. You understand? That's the words that Christ spoke unto us. The laws of the most High God. God's commandments. Get that in Matthew 19, verse 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. Come on. And behold, one came and said unto him, mm -hmm. Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? You see that? What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So this man is asking an important question. Remember it says foolish and unlearned questions avoid, but guess what? Wise questions 
and learn questions you must not avoid. You must listen to them and give answer when need required. And Christ now is going to give answer because there's a need here. Go ahead. And he said unto him, mm -hmm. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Right? But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Then we must do what? Keep the commandments. If you enter into life, we get, if we want eternal life, we must keep the commandments. That's what he's saying. That's the key, it's clear cut. There's no confusion here. If you will enter into life, keep the commandments. The words that I speak unto you, I spoke unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Revelation 22 verse 14. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Come on. Blessed are they that do his commandments, mm -hmm. that they may have right to it, to the tree of life. You see that? Because Christ is that tree of life. Christ is that tree of life. Read that again, verse 14. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Mm hmm Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are that they, they that have. do, that do, that do his commandments, that apply his commandments, that they may what? That they may have right to the tree of life. That we may have right to the tree of life. Come on. And may enter in through the gates into the city. The gate is the, is the kingdom of heaven. That's where the kingdom of Jerusalem. Those are the 12 gates according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Do you understand? But when we, if we want to enter into life, brothers and sisters, we must keep God's commandments because that's the only way we're going to have life. That's the only way we're going to have perfect peace. You cannot say that for nothing. Do you understand? Okay, I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For giving us life that we also may have life. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. All praise to the Most High.